All right. Back with Guy and Garlic here. I almost pronounced my name Ian because we were just talking about it. <laughs> I've got Matt Johnston. Uh, Matt is uh, the founder of Guide Social Global. Is that is that what we're calling it these days? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Global's not in the business why, name. Why did, I, why did I think there was Global in there? Because that's the freaking website. It's guidesocialglobal.com. Like somebody convinced me for SEO that was a good idea at some point. I don't know. Oh. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, Matt, I'm super excited. We're talking about online lead gen. We're going to talk about fake user reviews. We're going to talk about all things video. But just before we get going, I, Matt and I, Matt was on uh, Giants of Video two years ago. And I remember Matt giving an amazing talk. Wow, was it two years? Wow. It's two years. Yeah. That this little thing called the pandemic just went. <laughs> um, and Matt gave an amazing talk on TikTok. And some people listened to me and made a lot of money. A lot of people were like, oh, I got to dance and sing on TikTok. And now they're like, do you know any TikTok experts? Uh, so I'm mad. Is going to talk about what's cutting edge right now in video and lead gen. So I think you should listen to him. Listen to him this time. All right, Matt. How do we generate leads with video? <laughs> so let's <laughs> let's actually, let's go through your time? case study. Let's go through your case study first uh, of the client. You have a lead gen agency that you work with that's lead, generating leads for attorneys. We won't name the the agency, but tell me about this. How, uh, how did they come to you? Why did they come to you? How'd you make it work? Well, they they came to me because they can't really advertise on Facebook and Instagram. And I don't know if anybody should at this point. So great, good for them. So they, so they were scaling through YouTube and they, they sort of observed that their YouTube um, was with with the volume that they were spending which was somewhere in the realm of you know half a million dollars a month i mean with with the volume they were spending it was eating creative for breakfast like so it just constantly needed new creative and new ideas and and things like that so they were just you know these was just uh they were just out there trying to figure out how to how to make a mark and 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 luckily um you know they were willing to go a little bit outside of the normal comfort zone. I mean, because a lot of the stuff that we make, um, I use, I use a lot of actors and we do commercials essentially, but, um, they don't look like TV commercials necessarily, but they're scripted, well shot commercials, often funny. And, um, the first, I mean, we're, we're working with them long term now, but when we first started working together, I, uh, I made them, you know, what we call our centerpiece ads, essentially, which is like a commercial person talking to camera script that I write. Um, I direct it all as well. Like we're small. And um, yeah, I mean, the ad was like super funny. I thought it had a talking fish in it. There was a running sushi gag. Um, but on top of those <laughs> pieces, which were for the memorable piece of it, there was direct response stuff, right? It was essentially like my, my centerpiece video script model. Um, I, you know, I call it like the four R's cause we all need like these little, these little methodologies, right? But <laughs> Ryle release reveal, uh, no, it's relate Ryle reveal release. Essentially it's pain, agitate, solve, right? Like we rile up the emotions, um, we stir up the problem and we, we identify the, uh, empathetically, which I think is everything. I think empathy is like the most important thing in our, I think it's the most important thing in life actually personally. And, but, but, but it also like really helps sell. So, um, you bring in that ideal customer and then, you know, you, you, you tell them why you're the obvious choice to the problem and the emotion that you just stirred up. And my secret sauce besides comedy is writing the story always from a customer perspective so that they can essentially trace the journey, you know, and it's not, it doesn't pretend to be a testimonial. It's way too well produced and clearly scripted. Nobody's going to think it's a testimonial, but it's written from that customer perspective. So, I mean, when you think about it, who's, 
who are you going to trust? Like, let's say you, let, let's say that you want video. Cause that's what I and I both like sell video as a product, right? Like if you want video, like, are you going to trust Matt Johnston saying, Hey, I'm amazing at what I do. You should come work with us. Or are you more likely to trust somebody else, anybody else, honestly, just saying, Hey, you know, who's great with video, Matt Johnston, you should hire him to make ads for you. That's going to have a lot more weight because that is that third party uh, view on it. And obviously, the closer they're connected, the better, you know. So that's where, you know, customer stories and testimonials come in, which is great because then you can pull on the emotional angle. But I write it from the customer perspective because that's where the empathy comes from. Because I'm basically hoping that I can put a mirror up to the viewer, like the ideal customer, and they'll say, yep, that's me. I got all that shit going on, so I should be interested. And that's obviously important with YouTube tactically because you pay for uh, everybody that watches past 30 seconds. So you want to get everybody out that is not interested before 30 seconds so that they're, it's a free impression. So, uh, and just keep and just pay for the people that are actually interested in your in your service so with this ad it was essentially you know it was marketing to people that get in that have gotten j just recently been in a car accident and um it was easy for me to write because i was in one when i was in vegas like 10 years ago i was in a car accident that it wasn't my fault and i didn't talk to a lawyer because I, I didn't come across a service like this because uh, I probably could have gotten a much bigger settlement. I didn't get a settlement at all. Like, I just, like, it was just a freaking disaster. And I just wrote for my experience, you know, and it was a funny ad. I don't know why the talking fish showed up. I mean, I'll put a link in the show notes or something. But, um, it's, uh, uh, but he was funny. And um, we sort of, like, the, I feel like that's the other piece of it that a lot of people are missing when it comes to this. Like, a lot of, like, all of my ads are doing basic marketing stuff. Pain, agitate, solve. I call it relate, rile, reveal, release, right? Like, relate to them, show empathy, bring in the ideal customer. Rile, stir up the emotions. Reveal, how are you, like, what's your unique offer? And how do you uniquely solve that problem that they have? And then release, it releases the tension that was built up from having that problem, right? You're sort of having your future, your, your future casting, like the fact that if you sign up for this, my, my, my tension and stress will be released. But I feel like the X factor is the memorable side of it. You know, right now I'm almost through. I haven't read it all. <laughs> but um, have you read Tipping Point? that Malcolm Gladwell book, really famous Malcolm Gladwell book. So he, he talks a lot about that, um, that memorable piece, you know, like it's the memorable thing, you know, like he talked about Paul Revere's ride at the beginning. And he was talking about how Paul Revere was able to spread this message far and wide when he went on his big ride and somebody else apparently did like almost the same thing, but you never hear about them and the British invaded anyway, and they weren't ready for it. Cause like that dude, like, I don't know what it was. He wasn't as charismatic or memorable or whatever it was. He wasn't able to get the job done while Paul Revere was. And that's really interesting, you know, because I feel like the most successful ads that we've had um, in this lead gen capacity have had that memorable moment. Like, it's not just like, uh, I mean, think about every, every like lawyer ad that you see on TV, especially, right? It's typically something like, did you get caught in a car crash? Do you know that you deserve X, Y, Z? There's a better way. Call, call, blah, blah. Like, you know, it's like the same thing. And it's very serious, you know? Um, and there might be some social proof in there. But man, like, what if you put in some, con like, I think, like, I don't know. As I get older, I reflect a lot more. And one of the things that I realize is that I feel like I'm just talking and talking, but I guess I'm a guest on your podcast. So I guess that's okay. Uh, one of the um one of the uh like it, all the it'd be really bad if you didn't talk my... i know i know i know right one of the biggest success like i i feel like all the biggest successes in my life and there's been a lot of losses more losses than successes but like all the biggest successes have come from the risks that i've taken um and i feel like um like what I'm really realizing lately, this is a big, big moment for me, is that I've realized that it's impossible to win in the middle, you know? 
I mean, I've really realized that. And like everybody is out there selling how to copy and paste their stuff into your stuff. And essentially we all sign up for it because it just sounds easy. And we, and we have imposter syndrome about our ability to do it. So we say, okay, I'll just take that and do that. But event, but you're not really going to win that way because nobody wins in the middle. So you need to find a way to take a risk. You know, I mean, that's the difference between being successful and not, I think. And uh, I guess like in a way that's our secret to success with the ads that we make. You know, I mean, a lot of people come to this and they want stuff that other people have made. And I, I, I don't, I don't want to make that for them, you know, because, you know, they're like, you know, because it's just imposter syndrome, right? Like, Hey, my friend made this ad and they're spending a thousand dollars a week on it now. So I think we should do that. And it sounds attractive, but I mean, what's your brand going to be, you know, um, everybody's so concerned about money and numbers now. What are we talking about? The case study? Listen, the ad had a talking fish. It was super funny. <laughs> Nobody was doing a YouTube ad for lawyers that had a talking fish in it. It did all the right marketing stuff, and that's why it worked, essentially, I believe. Yeah, and you got, I mean, creative is important. I think that the, everyone freaks out about algorithms and freaks out about all this other stuff. And if you just have really good creative and a good clear offer, you can win and stand out. Like, I think what you said, nobody wins in the middle is key. Like you cannot, it, there was a, it, there was time you could put a video up and people would watch it. Now there's 8 million videos for people to watch. You've got to stand out. So when you're trying to stand out, yeah. what, what, how are you doing that? What, how are you figuring out what's going to stand out? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I, I think one thing you definitely could do that I don't really do is look at what everybody else is doing and do the opposite. I think maybe I do that instinctively, but I think that's a good idea. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, for me, like, I don't know. I'm a bit auteur with it. Like most people, like I would say 99% of businesses don't have an ad like I often make and which has humor and is fun and is not, a fr and actually like doesn't tell cringe jokes and, you know, is actually well produced and thought through and the acting is really good. And so I sort of hinge on that. But I think if you're thinking through it, because you don't know, I don't know about that. You want to know what, what this means to you, right? Like if you're thinking about how to be memorable, um, I mean, I think the, I mean, obviously the best thing that you can do is put yourself in the customer's shoes, first of all, because that, because you have to think about what they're thinking about, because you definitely have to call them out and you have to, you have to 100% empathize with them. And you know that whole thing, like, it's funny because it's true. That's it. That's the whole, that's like the whole game, you know? Um, I have little tips and tricks for comedy that I use in my script. But, um, you know, I think that in order to stand out, I think you need to be extremely honest and then about what the pain and problems are. And then one of the tricks that I often do for comedy is to just sort of, and to make an ad memorable is, I kind of do, like I kind of internally in my head call it the family guy technique. You watch family guy, Ian? Yeah. So you know how they often, when they tell jokes in family, like they have this little thing they've been doing for 20 years. My God, family guy's been on forever. And they go, and they quick go to a scene, which is like, you know, it's kind of like when Kate Moss fell through the cracks in my floor or something. I just remember that specific joke. And then they go, they flip over to Kate Moss falling through the crack in the floor or something. So that's what I often do. Like I find a metaphor for like the pain or the problem or something or the struggle or the stress. And I find a way to blow that up to a sort of like absurd level and that really helps with um, helps with the comedy. Um, 
I think in the like in the with with the talking fish, I think it was just simply having a guide, you know. And I've written a few characters like that where, uh, and it was a cartoon character, not an actual actor that I put in. Uh, obviously, was, <laughs> and uh, like that guide ended up filling the role of you know we have person who is stressed out, confused, doesn't know what to do. The guide comes in and helps help them helps them see the light. Um, it's, which is just sort of a device. But um, I think if you can think of one device that really puts things in, in a really unique perspective, you have a chance at it. I mean, I wish it was easy. Like, I wish, that's the thing. Everybody's like, everybody wants a quick fix answer where they're kind of like, you know, oh, I can just read a book on this and be able to like do a funny ad or I just, or like be memorable or something. But like, it's not, necessarily easy to do which is i guess why i have an agency but like i would say so 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 i guess like the best the most tactical advice honestly is just look at what everybody's doing and do the opposite you have a much better chance of getting noticed right you know i i think that's a big thing because people see and a 30 second ad they're like oh this seems so simple and easy Cause it's 30 seconds, but you've spent all this time boiling it down to that 30 seconds or to two minutes that they don't see in all the years of experience that make you think, oh, I need to switch this word to this word and this word to this word. And it's really, like you said, they're uh, like, do the opposite, be brave, but then you gotta, you gotta put the work in, don't you? Yeah, you gotta put the work in. Well, one of the great things about running ads for lead gen we don't run the ads, we just do video. But like one of the great things about it is that you're not selling the product, you know, you're selling the call or you're selling the application. And I think one of the reasons why these videos work so well for lead gen is because they're really good at stirring up the emotion because people buy because of emotion, not because of logic. Logic um, is a factor and it pushes them over the edge, but ultimately it's emotion is the reason why people will buy. And without some sort of ad creative, you're not going to get that emotion, you know? Whether it's like something like I do, which is like a scripted commercial or something like you do, Ian, with your customer testimonials. I mean, I'm sure that those are emotion-based, right? Obviously, I feel X, Y, Z now because I did ABC. People want to feel like that, and that moves others to buy because they see themselves in that in that person. But the wonderful thing is you stir up that emotion with the creative in a way that only video can do, and then you're just selling an app. Like, all I got to do is fill out an application. All I need to do is book a phone call, you know, rather than it's a much harder game in e-commerce. And we, we do a lot of that too, but it's a much harder game in e-commerce when you're trying to get somebody to go cold to a product page and buy a two or $300 product. Still works, works better with a video ad than anything else, but um, it's so much easier to sell a phone call. As, and, but, but here's the trick that I've noticed re- that, that people don't focus on enough. Just sell the phone call, just sell the application. You know what I mean? Like you need to get people to that next step and then you shouldn't be relying on the ads for everything, right? Like it should be taken over by an actual sales process on the other end. Our goal is to get, you know, get good people clicking through and converting. And then your goal is to sell those people. Usually when a lot of leads aren't closing, it's not the ads, it's Mm -hmm. the sales process. Yeah. Sorry. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I, I, I agree completely I hear that all the time that internet leads don't work I'm like they put their name in there for a specific thing yes some of them might not be exactly right but you and, and to your point if you if you drove emotion if you drove the person's emotion you can't wait because that emotion will dissipate that's the other part too right it's like they're an emotional high or low whatever, however you did it they're emotional now. You've got to hit that lead then and keep that emotion mm-hmm. where it was. Yeah. 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 What I love to, I mean, what I love to, re- I mean, like we don't do what you do, but what, what businesses should do is they should have some of the stuff that we do or create it themselves. That's this sort of memorable um, conversion based ad, you know, with that helps brand it and converts, but then they need to have the stuff that you do because it continues to reinforce 
the message, right? It continues to reinforce. Oh, that's why I booked the call. That's oh oh wow. They are different because these people might have filled out three applications in the last week for this same similar offer, right? How I mean, how many of us have done lead gen? I know I've done it for my own company that you've like got on the phone with somebody and they're like, oh yeah, what was that form I filled out? I filled out like three of them this week for blah, blah, blah companies. Um, but if you send them testimonials that are clear, that are emotional, well done, um, it builds trust, which is honestly, when you're in a super competitive market, um, I mean, trust is all you got to rely on, you know, like me you, you, you need to be memorable and you need to be, it's basically PR. You need to be memorable and you need to be trusted. You need to, you know, no, like, no, like trust. Um, but the good news is everybody, like most businesses just suck at all this stuff. So like if you make the effort, you will, you will be able to, to transcend because like a lot of people just don't see this stuff. And it's so easy with technology to distribute whatever content you want. I mean, um, to people, um, and a lot of times you can convert a previously unconverted lead with a really good testimonial. And that's extremely valuable. You know, I mean, we need to rethink what a bad lead is and what the purpose of our business is. Are we here to help people or are we here to make money? If you're here to make money, you know, you're only going to go so far. I mean, you need, you need to have a why, right? And so you need to get on these calls. No, I agree, and I and I think this is import, a really important conversation because it's it's a blend of things. It's not one tactic, and you need. To, and I think now you do need to go to really high quality people for that individual piece because, like, you made a very important point. It's so easy to upload and distribute video now that you have to cut through the noise, and you have to have someone's really good at that piece. Like you're saying, the lead gen piece, get the attention. Grab the attention. We don't do that because it's it's a specific talent. It's like knowing comedy, knowing timing, knowing those types of things is a very specific time talent. That that's why I mean, have you ever seen a stand up comedian say, "Oh yeah, I started stand up comedy yesterday, and now I'm famous"? No, it's always ten years of stand up comedy, right? And that's not even dynamic. That's them going up and doing the same bit over and over again. This is. That's why I think it's so important the data you have in, because everyone talks about data. The data you have inside your head of all the things that you've done and haven't done and created that didn't work and work is important. And I think that when someone goes to hire someone, just because they have a camera doesn't mean they're a great or even a great beautiful cinematographer doesn't mean they're a great video marketer. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so speaking I have nothing of else to expand on that. Yeah, I mean, like, of course, but like the 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 other thing I'll say is like, if you want a way to like be different and you don't want to like get into all this like scripting and you're convinced you're not funny. I mean, I used to think I couldn't write comedy, but now I think I'm okay at it. Um, so I don't know. Maybe you're good and you should try doing some comedy. But I um. Honestly, I think there's the other side of it, which is just like, like if I, like if I owned like an e-commerce business or like I, or like a company that I was trying to get leads for and I was out there doing ads all the time, just like going out there and being really, really raw and vulnerable, I think is the other way to do it. Because that's the other thing that people aren't doing is being vulnerable. I like, I think Instagram has destroyed America and like, because it's just like a curated version of our life. It's not just Instagram though. Like we all chase status and we all chase like this feeling of importance. And when we can curate that, we can make sure that we are seen as important by anyone that sees us. And then we're validated when they like, comment, share our stuff or whatever. Uh, and that makes us feel good. Um, but what if you were for a moment to just go on, just, just go up there and just like, if you really care about what you do, like to just go up there and just make a video, which just, like pours your heart out. I mean, that would get attention. That would be memorable. You know, like we, and you see, like in all these cases, we're just searching for something real, you know, like something real to hold on to, like make me feel something, you know? I mean, like when I was, I used to work in um, publishing 
So I used to like run all these like big Facebook video programs in the days when organic Facebook video was huge. Um, and when I was at like, when I was running video at like New York Magazine and when I was at Now This and stuff, our most viral videos were always the heart string tugger stories about people overcoming adversity. Um, but they were real because because we were doing journalism. Like it wasn't one of these fake overcoming adversity things, right? Where it's kind of like, do you want to hear the story about how I was living in a ditch and now I'm a multi-billionaire? It wasn't like that crap. It was, um, you know, it was like real stories of like people like beating cancer and then like winning a triathlon or like, you know, something like that. And that stuff always went viral and it was memorable and people would remember it and talk about it and it would become water cooler. That's what you need to do for your brand um, is create those real true connections and emotions with your potential customers. And you can do that in like the scripted way and make them laugh and, and, and get on the same team with them. But you can also be really vulnerable. And I mean, people are just so nervous about that. Um, I don't but know. It's what sta- um, yeah, it's what stands out. It's what, and I, I right. just had this discussion with a client because we were doing her bio video, and she's an attorney. I won't mention who she is, and ch- she talks about September 11th and how she start like, and she just walked out from working with a person and like started crying, and she starts crying in the video, and she's like, oh, she said, oh, well, my the other attorney said they uh, no one wants to see an attorney cry. I'm like, no, this is gold. Ugh. You. You, you, because it's you genuinely yeah. crying about, it's not, you're not crying about losing a case. You're crying about something that is a, a mutual experience with everyone. You keep that in there. I know it's scary, but that's what people are going to remember. Yeah. And, and if someone yeah. doesn't hire you because yeah. you're crying because of the World Trade Center come down, do you want to work with them? <laughs> but it's all crap anyway. Like, what am I get? Like, like. That's just people not thinking about people. Like we don't have enough empathy. We're so concerned about ourselves all the time and that's not gonna go away. But that lawyer that gave that advice was not actually thinking about the people that might hire her. Like he wasn't thinking about her or she or whoever gave the advice. They weren't thinking about that person. You know, because that person is gonna look at it and see a little bit more of themselves. Because how, I mean, like we all like to pretend on social media because that's where we see everybody. Uh, that everything's all rosy all the time, but like, I don't know. I have a therapist. I have a couple business coaches. I'm going through shit all the time, man. Like things are not always so pretty, you know. Like if I see stories that are real and help me and like mirror the actual emotional reality that I'm facing, then I'm gonna feel a connection to them, and like that will lead to all that other crap that we measure, like clicks and sales and leads and all these things, but. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it's actually not that hard to think about. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm making, I make it seem a little bit difficult because it's like, oh, you have to write comedy scripts or whatever. But all I'm ca- trying to do is get to the emotion, you know. Um, and if I like, if I was a personal brand, I mean, I am, I guess, but I'm not selling anything right now. So, like, I mean, I guess if I was out there like trying to sell myself or like a company that I was like, you know, and I was creating a lot of ads. I mean, I would just go and pour my heart out everywhere I could, you know? I mean, because I do care. I mean, if you don't care, then it's hard. But, I mean, if you care, if you have a why, if you have a reason for doing this, uh, people will feel that authenticity. And they they just want to, like, everyone is out there just wanting to be heard. And it's very difficult with social media to do that because it's not a listening platform. It's like a one-sided conversation platform. So the best thing that you can possibly do to help people feel heard is to be real with them so that they can feel like somebody is finally saying a truth that they never get to hear, you know? And you can do this across the board. You can do this in e-com. Like many people that I know that have started e-commerce businesses have started them for like very like personal reasons, you know, like they invented a product because of a certain way that they feel or like there was a problem in their lives or some of them have even more heartfelt stories, you know, like a family member died of X, Y, Z. So they invented something to help prevent this problem. Like I want all the dirty laundry 
you know, to be out there because that is going to make people fall in love with you. And they'll be brand loyal too, because they'll be buying, it's more than a transaction for them. And that will eventually compel word of mouth, which is the most powerful marketing tactic that there is, but it's very hard to scale. It is, it is. So speaking of marketing tactics, how do you feel about user generated content? That's not really users. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was going off on that before the show. I'm glad that we're in. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I have a big I have a big problem with that, right? So, I mean, like it's partially TikTok's fault, but it's also just kind of like groupthink sheep stuff, you know? Um like trying to copy what works. I mean, because a lot of this like user-generated content, which essentially means that there's a customer who makes a video with their phone, that often feels TikToky or Instagram story raw and tells people about it. Um, and that means a customer, right? But now there's a whole thing, right? So, so, so every, every business now is pursuing getting user generated content. I know because I talk to so many businesses all the time that they all want more user generated content because they're on these business groups and Facebook groups with other people that are saying user generated content is the best thing you can have. And, you know, we all just follow, 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 or like we had one that really blew up. And so industries have now been created around this and a normalization of the idea that we can hire an actor or a fake fluencer, which I just coined just now to, uh, (laughs) to do it for them, like is okay. I just find it like supremely unethical. That's all really like, like, because, because the thing is, it's like, you never want to hurt anybody. Right. Like ethics are hard. Like I I often teach, like I teach like a PR class in college and we talk about ethics and it's very hard to teach. And I mean, it kind of comes down to do the right thing, but then ultimately do the right thing is, is kind of like very subjective. So it's kind of hard. And what, where where we always end up on where like what's ethical and what's not is if it causes harm to other people it's probably not eth- like like it should not cause harm to other people known or unknown to that person i guess that's kind of my definition of ethical person my personal definition and there's probably a lot of people that disagree with that it's a very hard thing to define but i would argue that if you are hiring someone who is not an actual customer to do an ad for you, which is essentially a testimonial, but like it's filmed with a phone and they're not an actual customer, but you send them the product and you say, here's what I want you to film for me. And they are saying, Hey, I just got this in the mail. It's amazing. It does this, this, and this, or I bought this off of this, this site. Da, 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 da. Um, I think that's doing a lot of harm because you're tricking people. I mean, because no, I mean, the thing is, is anybody watching that and thinking it's not a customer? No, everybody thinks it's a real customer. And there are companies that have built entire businesses and reputations off of fake user generated content and it's total garbage. And, it's become so ubiquitous now that 90% of the user generated content that you think you see, like if you get a lot of it in your feed as you do, like most of it is lies. Like these are not actual customers. How do you feel about that? Like if you're listening to this show and you didn't know that, how do you feel? And ch- chances are, if you're listening to this show, you do know that. So what do you think if like your uncle or something who doesn't know anything about this industry knew that, knew that would he be surprised or your aunt would she be surprised and how would it make them feel you know oh like most of the my, most of these testimonials that you see are fake you know like they're just actors hired really yeah they're actors but they look real they're just shot with a phone right yeah they're paid it's a whole thing oh but you can't put fake reviews on websites right like you couldn't go on amazon and post a fake review they would take it down right yeah it's just not policed. Oh, okay. So it's just like gray hat marketing, almost black hat, you know? Uh, I don't find it ethical. And I also don't think it's necessary. 
<laughs> honestly, if you're a good business, personally. Yeah, I I mean I agree completely, and you know there are some industries where it's it's monitored. Uh, funny story: we were doing a lawyer video, and I stood in as like the in, in for B roll as it, the client. I didn't pretend to be a client except for in the B roll, and it didn't even say I was a client. It was just me and him talking across there, and the ethics board. Act, and then we had one of our other uh, PAs, production assistants, stand in as an, another client. And we didn't say they were clients. It was just like, hey, sitting at a table talking, right? B-roll. And um, the ethics board came back and said, well, she she doesn't look like a criminal. <laughs> That's interesting. Wow. So, but I did. I, I fit, I fit the... the <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but... But to your point with fake influencers, and I love that term. I'm, I, I just bought the domain, so no, I'm just kidding. Did you really? No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to buy any more domains. My wife is. I'm so, like close to. I a know, thousand. right? It becomes a yeah. It turns you into a serial. It's, it, it fulfills your serial entrepreneur thing. Maybe one day I'll have a webinar that does something with that, and I'll want it. <laughs> but. You know, at the other side of the other problem with fake user generated content is what I see the positive side of actually talking to customers, which Rick Cesari, who did, you know, Sonicare has been on and, you know, mm. is mm -hmm. yeah. you, t you talk to your customers and you listen to them and have them do videos and actually interview them and see what they say and for real, because that's that's yeah. gold for your business. And, and you're just being lazy by saying, oh, I'm going to get an actor. Right. If you have a product that stinks that you can't get a couple people to say talk about it, then you need to fix your product. You don't need to go get user generated content. I or you I, need to fix uh, your customer service. Yeah, yeah. You need to fix something if you can't get pe great people to talk, real people to talk about great stuff, and you're missing a huge opportunity. Yeah. Because also when you talk to your customers, you, you learn more about your product. You learn how they're using it. You learn what's great about it, what they don't like about it, what they like about your customer service. You also hear keywords. You never know, like, and and you get genuinely good and emotional response. Now, I I I feel like subconsciously we can tell when someone's being fake. And most of these actors on here, their emotional response is a little off. And I think mm -hmm. subconsciously people can tell that. To your point of emotions, emotions sell everything. Empathy sells everything. And if we don't have that emotional arc, they're not going to make a decision. So I, I stand with you. I think the fake user generated content is, or actors is just a bad pain for that. It's just a bad, bad, bad practice. I mean, it's going to go away. I mean, like, it's just, it's too, it's too, uh, I don't know. Like, it's not going to be around forever. But don't, you know, it, it's not going to, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't fulfill your brand. And this is a great point that you were being like, you should be talking to your customers anyway. Like, I was so I'm giving this talk at Social Media Week Lima in Ohio next week about user generated content essentially or like testimonials. And I was really thinking about how to deliver this talk. I didn't I've been struggling. And I did a bunch of journaling this morning on it and um what I came to essentially was that I'm going to sort of talk about what you just talked about because I think it's right on. Like the first step to this is not some tactic to like get people to, you know, because obviously the first thing that people face is how do I get people to do it? You know, like how do I get people to film user generated content? Because people will either say they'll do it and then not do it, or they will just not even respond to you. So you have to incentivize them, give them free stuff and everything. Or you have to, or, or they'll do it and it'll suck, you know, because it just won't have everything in it. It'll, it'll suck from a marketing perspective, you know, like it won't sell for you. Um, so I was really, I was trying to figure out how I'm going to do this talk. And what I decided on was what I'm going to, I'm going to zoom out, I think at the beginning and be like, listen, you, this needs to be like, if, if you, you need to create an environment in your business where you and your customers are friends. You're on the same level. They feel like they have an intimate relationship with your business. They love you. They're loyal and they would be happy to do this. And they would be happy to be emotional about it. And they would be happy to be raw. You need to create a business 
and create a experience for them where they know that you really care about them and you're not just another number. You need to create that first, you know? Because we've I've seen it all during my time doing this stuff. Like, hey, please take a $50 Amazon gift certificate for a video or this or that. Like, a $100 Amazon gift certificate. Like, that stuff doesn't really work, you know? I mean, it really, like, like people... Ultimately, the biggest thing that's going to incentivize people won't be money. It will be actually feeling heard and listened to and cared about, you know? Um, what's the biggest way to make people like you? To make them f feel important. So you should make your customers feel important to you and to the world and to everything that they're doing. If they buy something from you, they should be kink. I mean, you, you don't exist as a business without them. So you need to be in the trenches with them. Or if you're a larger company, you need to have like a system in place so that they feel really connected to the company. And then this whole user generated content and testimonial thing gets easy. Like you hire somebody who can capture the really good content because the raw material is already going to be there. It just needs to be shaped. And the user generated content is going to be, I mean, because ultimately it doesn't really matter how they record it. It just needs to feel real and have emotion. They're not going to have any problem with that if they love you. So you have to create a good business first. If you think you're going to win on tactics, you won't. Like you have to create a good business first and have these principles in place and actually care about what you're doing and care about your customers and yeah i mean i i wouldn't even say it's a harder road i mean it's 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 more fun it's more interesting you fill your life with more purpose i mean we're on this planet for like a sliver of 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 the history of time like what are you gonna do with it you know you're just gonna like lie to people and try to make some money and then you know, and then you, then you're 60 or 70 and you're like, yeah, what am I going to do now? I got like 10, 20 years left. Yeah. You know? I mean, like what? Like you have to care. You have to, you have to stand for something. You have to believe in something, even if it's small. So anyway, yeah. Don't pull the wool over your customer's eyes. That's the best way to, uh, <laughs> it's the best way to kill your brand. <laughs> imagine yes, uh, like like if if anybody out there is running fake user generated content imagine if your current customers knew that you were doing that what would they say do you think if you got them in a room they'd be not happy be pissed <laughs> i think i i mean i would be i would yeah be even, even if they loved your product Mm -hmm. they'd, they'd be, they'd be it's almost like you're buying because because really what you're buying is trust like when you're selling something online you're trying to get them to trust you you're selling trust and what you do to sell that trust is social proof like you use other customers to help say listen you should trust these guys because they they help me they can help you and that's a big reason i've got stats on this that i don't have in front of me but I'm sure you have the Mayan because you're you you run in this too. So, social proof is the biggest driver of sales online. So what if it's all a lie? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I I I don't really know that that's the that, that that's a world I want to be a part of. Um, so maybe we can eradicate it through this podcast because I know you have you know billions of listeners across the world and we're gonna reach every single one of them with this message. You know, you know what though? It only takes an idea. It only takes an idea. Nope, it will. It will. Matt, this has been awesome. Where can people fi find you these days? You said no more social media. <laughs> yeah so i recently i'm trying to like post on social media through like other platforms to get stuff out there but i don't look at it anymore because i realize that it makes me feel like absolute trash like every time i go on social media i think that i'm behind everybody i get massive imposter syndrome i am looking i'm fishing for validation it like it creates massive unhappiness in my life so I've decided to stop using it because I don't want to be like an unhappy person who always thinks that I'm not the person that I should be because I'm looking at everybody else. So that's why I'm not on social media. 
or I mean like <laughs> not looking at it. Um, I'm not so naive to think that I can like ignore a whole distribution platform, but I, I, I don't feel that consuming it is good for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can, yeah, I, I haven't like my, my agency website, I guess is the best place, which is guide social global.com. Nice. Well, we'll I'm in a ranting there. mood today, apparently. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> rants. Marketing rants with Matt Johnston with a T. Jeez. Oh, geez. Matt Johnston with yeah, T for right. TikTok. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matt, thank you so much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. It's always fun to talk to you. Uh, thank you all for taking Matt and I on your journey. Make sure you go like all his stuff and tell him how he moved you. And uh, <laughs> this has been Ian Garlic and the Garlic Marketing Show.